All right, so in our next example, we're going to look at the graph of a rational function. And, and rational functions are, are ones where the function itself is going to give you a lot of this information that you use towards the graph. Okay? So the first thing you probably want to do with any rational function is see if you can factor the top and the bottom. And indeed you can. This is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 3. Right? And one of the reasons that you want to factor before you do anything else is maybe you get lucky and there are common factors top and bottom that cancel out and your function simplifies and you have a lot less work to do. Not so lucky here. But nonetheless, let's see what kind of information we can gather from our function. The first thing we see is that we have two vertical asymptotes, right? The vertical asymptotes are always going to occur at the zeros in the denominator. So we have 1 at minus 2. We have another one at plus 3. Um, we also have a horizontal asymptote, right? Degree is the same top and bottom, right? Um, and so we probably should say this, right? Um, I've got limited board space, so maybe I'm just going to say this out loud instead of writing it down. Same degree, top and bottom, so we look at the coefficients, right? 1 times x squared, 1 times x squared. 1 over 1, we know that y equals 1. is going to be a horizontal asymptote. OK. What about intercepts? Well, we have two zeros in the, in the numerator, right? At minus 1, 0, and at 2, 0, we have intercepts. Uh, what about the y-intercept? If we compute f of 0, we get minus 2 over minus 6, which is 1 third. So we have a y-intercept here, right? 0, 1 third. OK, so we're already getting some, some data points on our graph. Uh, there's one more bit of information that we can get before we move on to the first derivative. OK, let's give ourselves a little number line here. Let's mark off what we found so far. So we mark off our asymptote, our intercept, our other intercept, and our other asymptote. Okay? And once you do enough of these, you start kind of getting the hang of filling out the signs on these number lines pretty quickly. And here we know that all four of these are linear factors, right? There's nothing here that's raised to a power, and, and more to the point, there's nothing raised to an even power. And that means that at each one of these four points, we expect to get a sign change. So all we really have to do is figure out the sign, let's say, out here, and then we alternate signs. So if x is equal to, let's say, 4, we can quickly check that all four of those factors are positive. So the whole thing is positive out here. And then we alternate signs. Okay, so now we know that our fun where our function is positive, where it's negative. Again, this has nothing to do with increasing or decreasing yet. This is just where are we above or below the axis, okay? But that does tell us one thing. It tells us what's going on at the vertical asymptotes, right? As we approach minus 2 from the left, our function is positive. So we know the limit should be plus infinity. As we approach from the right, negative, right? Over here at 3, negative, positive. Okay? So we have that. And if you were, were going to guess without doing any more work, you would probably guess the correct graph, right? You would probably guess that this must come up here through this first intercept, right? Through that first x intercept, through the y intercept, hit a maximum somewhere, come down through the other intercept, and then go down towards 
the other vertical asymptote. And these bits here are just going to go asymptote to asymptote, right? And that is going to be the correct graph. But we don't yet know the location of that maximum. So we better move to the first derivative. So f prime, the derivative of the top is 2x minus 1 times the bottom, right? minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. divide by bottom squared, okay? We actually get lucky in this example because we have a common factor. So if we take that common factor out, then all we're left with is subtracting these two quadratics. The x squares are going to cancel. The minus x's are going to cancel. I'm left with just minus 6 minus minus 2, so minus 4, okay? So what I'm going to get is minus 4 times 2x minus 1. And we can factor that bottom if you like, right? We know that this is going to be x plus 2 squared times x minus 3 squared, okay? So let's do the number line for the first derivative, okay? We still have these asymptotes to account for, right? Now up top, there's only one zero, and that zero happens to be at one half, right? If x is equal to one half, the top is zero. And again, we, we do a sign check. Notice that these are now even powers, right? So these, the denominator does not contribute to the overall sign of the derivative, right? Either the denominator is zero or it's positive. So we just have to pay attention to the top. If x is bigger than a half, we have a positive number times minus four. So it's going to be negative, right? So decreasing, decreasing. If x is less than a half, this will become negative times another negative, positive, increasing, increasing. That seems to fit with the, yes, increasing, increasing, decreasing, decreasing, right? And now we know where that maximum is located. X equals one half, okay? What's F of one half? F of a half, um, plug it in, whether you find it easier here or here, you plug in X equals one half. Let's go over there, I think it's a little bit easier. Half plus one is three halves. A half minus 2 is minus 3 halves. On the bottom, a half plus 2 is 5 halves. A half minus 3 is oh, minus 5 halves. So we can multiply, clear those, you know, multiply everything by 4, get rid of those denominators. We have minus 3 over, or minus 9 over minus 25, minus signs cancel, 9 over 25, which is slightly bigger then a third, right? A third is 9 over 27. So that checks out, right? So at 1 half, we're just ever so slightly above a third. We're about there. We mark that point. Okay, and that's going to be our maximum. At this point, we're pretty confident that we've got the graph, but we want to make extra sure, we want to double check, so maybe we move to the second derivative. Um, second derivative is going to be a bit ugly here, right, because first derivative is already kind of ugly. Let's give it a try. Um, F double prime, derivative of the top, minus 8, times the bottom, x squared minus x minus 6 squared. Okay, minus the top, minus minus 4, plus 4, times the derivative of the bottom, 2, x squared, minus x, minus 6, times, uh, let's not forget, right, chain rule, we've got to take the derivative of the inside, 2x minus 1, right, 
Sometimes you get into these multi-step problems and you forget the little things. So we square F square, we have the fourth power. Um, but as usual, when you're doing the second derivative with these rational functions, you find that that denominator is common everywhere if you were careful and you didn't multiply things out that you shouldn't have. Okay, so we get something that looks like that. Okay, so now we can we can multiply everything out. Um, there's an eight that's common um, to everything because two times four is eight. So we have um, minus x squared plus x plus six, and then we're going to do two x plus. So this is going to be four x squared. Okay. Um, minus 4x plus 1 all over x plus 2 cubed, x minus 3 cubed. And if you clean this thing up on top, you have 3x squared um, minus 3x plus 5. Um, and you can confirm that this is an irreducible quadratic. It's always positive, okay? Plug it into the quadratic formula if you don't believe me. Um, so the top is always positive, right? Um, but we do get sign changes at those asymptotes. You still need to pay a little bit of attention here to signs. Minus two, three, okay? Um, you're gonna get something that looks like this. Um, positive. So concave up, negative, concave down, positive, concave up, okay? That fits with what we see here, okay? Concave up, concave up, right? Um, we know we're not going to dip down below that horizontal asymptote because if we, we, you know, you can cross a horizontal asymptote, that's allowed, but if you went back down, you'd have to come back up, and if you came back up, there'd be a minimum. We know there's not a minimum because there's only one critical number, okay? Concave down everywhere in the middle, including through that maximum. So we have something that looks like that, and you've got your graph. 